Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Frequency. So this episode was complicated in the sense of things just kept constantly changing. Okay, first of all, we come up with the fact that, like, yeah, like I thought, Raimi's got to suffer the consequences for what she did. Um, at first, it's kind of like slightly okay because it's like, oh yeah, cops are thinking her left and right. What I thought was the most hilarious thing is Stan being like, oh yeah, IA wants to investigate her. Whether he's a nightingale or not, we got to handle this right. I'm like, really? You out of anybody? Mr. Oh, do things right? Mr. I'm a dirty cop? I was like, Dah. The audacity that he has the nerve to say that. Like, I think, like, legitimately, I had to laugh. I was like, no way he really just said it. He really just said that. It just, it bothered me. I was like, I can't believe you said that. Uh, but essentially, IA wants to investigate Raimi into taking about the fact that it's, it's not a good shooting. But everyone else is like, oh, thanks, Raimi. Oh, good job, Raimi. You did it. Just because it's like, oh, she quote unquote killed the Nightingale killer. So. Which obviously I've still always been on. I've still I've been vocal about the fact is I've been very on the fence about Joe, especially with what goes on in this episode. But I'll get that in a second. Um, interestingly enough, she ends up uh, one of her, her lawyer ends up being Gordo's dad, and Gordo is being like, hey, like you know, it leads to the whole conversation between like because everything that like Raimi kind of set up last episode is kind of like playing out this episode because it's like, oh yeah, Kyle's texting asking how she's doing. And then, like, Daniel's out there waiting for her, which I love Gordo being like, I, like, my, like, I prefer Mosby saying, like, he prefers Kyle over Daniel. Like, I love the fact is that he's a good best friend, because he doesn't judge her. He's like, okay, I see what the situation is. I still think you should be with Kyle, not this dude. Uh, then Daniel's being like, yeah, I did what you asked, had dinner with her, and then, you know, I broke off the engagement this morning. And it's like, Raimi feel like, it's... It's what she wanted, but it's happening all at once. It's even Daniel's like, okay, yeah, you're right. This is kind of the worst time for me to be bringing that up because she got so much to deal with. Then it was the whole situation of like, oh yeah, like Gordo's dad brings her to the um, station, and that's when things changed. Like while midway she's in the elevator, it comes out. It's like, wait, what's going on? Wait, what? They, I love and I love that about the show. It's like. It's not even like a thing where it's like oh, there's like a noticeable change. Like most time travel shows, you kind of notice the changes immediately. But in this case, it's like nope. It's just like boom, one second she's dealing with one reality, and then like bam, she automatically shifts and like the timelines completely change. And I really love that about the show because coinciding with it, it's like the whole Frank side of things, which was just crazy this episode because it's like oh crap, the the car accident, which was caused by a drunk driver, which I guess worked out in Frank's favor because a person was drunk they saw someone crawling out the car they knew what kind of car it was but they were like they were so worried about getting in trouble you know drunk driving and everything they drove off so it worked out in frank's it worked out for frank in the sense of like that person wasn't there to focus enough like oh ask too many questions so it did work out for frank in the end but joe got away joe didn't do anything he just kind of taped himself or like, wrapped him wound up and went back home so there was nothing that came about it um, you know, interestingly enough, I can't remember her character's name, but the actress, she was a cop that came asking Frank about the car, uh, when he was sitting down, you know, dealing with that whole situation, like, the cop, like, I know her, she was in an ep she's in, she's not, she's actually been in, like, three or so episodes of Supernatural, I was like, ah, cause she's not, but she's not putting on a Minnesotan accent, you know, uh, so that was just kind of interesting, I was like, ah, I, I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's like CW, like, you know, you'll see different actors from different stuff up here. But it, it, it just kind of threw me off. I was like, ah, oh, that's crazy. Uh, I mean, take, for example, um, the actress who plays Raimi. Obviously, the first thing you've seen her on was, like, The Flash because she was Captain Cold's sister. Nevertheless. Oh, no, and then I forgot, even before, I think it was even before then, she was on t The Tomorrow People as well. So, but nevertheless, it's not important. I mean, it is because it's relevant to the conversation I'm having right now. But the point I'm getting back to is the fact is... Um, like Frank had a cover up about that whole car thing. Was I, what I wasn't expecting is bringing Jules in on. I was not. I didn't see that coming. Where he was just basically like, "Okay, I'm sorry to freak you out. Yeah, I was basically going after Nightingale." She's like, "Wait, and doing what? What were you going to do?" He's like, "Don't, don't make me answer." He's like, "You were going to kill him, Frank?" She's like, "She's like, no, don't do it like this." Okay, tell someone. It's like, who am I going to tell? There's no evidence proving that he's a Nightingale. I was like, "How do you know?" I just know. And she's like, "Oh, is this back to that radio thing?" He's like, "I can't tell you how I know." 
he's like, oh, it's because of this. She's, he's like, if I tell you, you're not, you didn't believe me then, and if I tell, try to explain things as an act to you now, you're gonna think I'm even crazier. Which is to be fair, like she really was like, yo, you're rude with the whole thing. I mean, granted, he had the opportunity, like he, you know, Raimi could have helped him out, but it's like at the same time, it's like knowing what Frank knows. Like if she had talked to future Raimi, the question is like, would she have really? Like, what would that have done? It does make you wonder what kind of changes that would have done if you'd made it so that Jules actually found out about future Raimi as well, but it's all that planet. But he's basically like, yo, Nightingale knows who we are, which is true because Nightingale took a picture from his wallet of them, so Nightingale knows exactly what they look like, so they're a target nevertheless. So it's kind of like, I have to do this. Um, even Going back to the whole car situation, I love it. It's like the car's messed up and Jules is kind of like, you know, Satch is like, yo, something's up. I can just tell you got this wound on your head. You just the way you've been acting. Yo, tell me about the car because like basically the impound lot kept asking about the car. Frank was just kind of dodgy. He's like, yo, what happened with the car? He's like, I got to see the car and even like even have Jules kind of like kind of buying time. Be like, yo, what, what's up with you, Satch? First you stab Frank in the back. Now you up here accusing him. I'm like, what's up with that? It's like, fine. You want to see the car? Go see. It. I was like, oh man, is she bluffing? Is she trying to make him go see it? Just like, and it didn't like he'll back down and be like, okay, you're right. I'm sorry. But no, he didn't. Went full front with it. Even Frank was like, yo, what's up with that? And then like Jules was like, no, don't, don't stop him. Let him look. He goes looks. It's like, yo, man, I'm sorry. It was good. And then Frank had to run, like after Satch left, Frank went over. It's like, what, what's going on? She's like. She was just like, yo, I had my uh, cousin Mike uh, fix up the car. And he's like, and he did this? She's like, no, he's still fixing it. He's like, wait, what? She's like, this isn't your car. I'm like, what? I was like, dude, that's so awesome. Like, I, I know him. It's like, because a thing is, very rarely in this series have we gotten to see Jules and Frank on the same side of things. Like, this is kind of our first time seeing them really work together. And just to me, I was like, dude, that's so awesome that she covered for him like that. Like, she knows what he's doing. Like, you know, she doesn't agree with it because she even brings it up later on. It's like, yo, find a different way. It's like, you don't want to do this. It's actually her and Satch who actually... Um, play a part in that, because they keep telling him, it's like, yo, you don't want to go down that route, especially from her, Jules' point of view, it's like, think about what it would do, like, you know, what if you get caught, you know, and it's not even just, a, it's that's one big part of it, but it's also what it would do to her, it's like, to him, it's like, when he came back from his two years on the cover, it's like, yeah, he was different, but she still saw the man that she loved, but it's like, if he does that, he won't be the same person, he's like, I won't change, she's like, how do you know, you don't know, like, what, doing this with you even if he is the nightingale you don't know she's just like so i don't know at the end of the day frank you're gonna have to make a choice and you know what she does uh he ends up making a choice of being like uh framing joe for stealing the money that i mean because that was part of the original plan that to make it seem like oh he took the money and ran when he just suddenly disappears because earlier in the episode a lady from his church i think her name was patty came to him because basically joe's one of the few people that has access to the money and so basically the police were going to get involved in everything and so joe this is what ended up changing the timeline it's because joe was worried about that the police search in the house he moved his wife's body which means that later on Raimi didn't hear him knocking on his wall to kind of hear the body you know hear him you know trying to remove the body at that time just like long list of events played out uh, basically making a lot of stuff that happened like two episodes ago not happen the fact is that him or even last episode with him being you know being haunted or him changing his identity you know I mean it works out for in Raimi's favor, because it's like, oh yeah, she never actually murdered him, which and I was, I was like, I did not expect that to be like, literally resolved in the middle of the episode, I was like, oh, I thought that was going to be like a full episode thing, if not longer, that she'd have to deal with that, because the plan was still one of like, hey, you still got to kill him, because it's no longer about just Jules and stopping him from killing all those people, it's also about helping Raimi out, because she's about to be in serious trouble, because it's not even just about losing her badge or whatever, it's also about going to jail, so... So Frank decided to kind of go against the route of being like, oh, I'm going to um, just simply frame him. And that gets him locked up for a little while. That gives him a little leeway time to kind of figure things out. Because once again, I still don't think he is Nightingale. Because like like I said, because just like everything in this episode kept changing, 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 changing. Especially when Raimi gets to the cabin at the end of the episode. It's like, oh, the last person we saw with Megan was her, her, um, her dad, Joe. But the moment she gets there, it's like, 
like she sees someone wounded and the person that's wounded is her brother even though her brother is supposedly supposed to be dead because Joe killed him it's like you know Joe kept saying the same thing I'm like oh yeah your your brother and your mom ran away so it's like okay wait so it was like like I mean it leaves you dumbfounded because you're like wait what it's just things keep changing because you don't because you don't necessarily because that's the cool thing about this whole time travel aspect you don't see the domino effect you don't know what leads to what um because initially the car that was chasing after like the truck could we see it at the end of the episode because it was there kind of riding riding behind Raimi pretty closely almost kind of running her off the road to a certain extent and she ends up calling Kyle to ask about the um who owns it and it was like some lady named Doris or something and the moment Raimi looks up the truck is going I was like oh so was that more of time changing or was that something else entirely like I'm confused about that was it he just happened the truck just happened to pull away at that time or was it was that like actually him and he was just like oh like he saw that Raimi was there so he decided to leave so she wouldn't follow him or was it just because time changed like I said I don't know I'm I'm completely misinterpreting that uh, so I do apologize I'm pretty sure it's probably the latter of like uh, time changing but who knows and also that it does beg up the question about the whole Kyle situation because of that too like because Kyle wasn't in the accident like he was in the other timeline and it's like and she, she's like, oh, this would be the last thing you ever hear from me. And he's like, no, I hope not. So it's like, where does her and Daniel stand in this timeline now? Does, did any of that still go through? Because I feel like, you know, because it's, it's so interesting. Because it's like, she doesn't really, like, cause that's the sucky thing about her um, circumstances. Is with this whole situation, she, she has to kind of think about the differences in the timeline for it to kind of correlate in her brain. It's like, she has to actively think about it. And then the memories kind of flow back. But it's like... For her, it's like her entire life has been in, on autopilot anytime there's changes. So, like, she knows the timeline is the way it was before, but then it's kind of like she was there auto, um, kind of on autopilot living the rest of her life, and then all of a sudden she gets caught up to this moment with her brain as it is. I mean, really, it's more so that time bends around her. It's not like, but it's like that's another way of looking at it. Like, um, I guess the basic way of explaining how I'm talking about it is the movie Click with Adam Sandler, like how. Like him fast forwarding time did that. Like basically, anytime it came to everyday life, he would just be, you know, on autopilot, just doing and saying whatever. So that's kind of what I was alluding to. But it's it is more like time is moving around her. She's kind of the only thing unchanged. So all I gotta say is that that just it has me confused. Like as like I said, I've thrown out the possibility of being that the brother has something to do with the because like out of anyone, he's like, yo, your brother. Like Joe was even saying himself to Megan, he's like, your brother understood me, and it's like. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Like, who shot her brother? Like, where's Joe in this whole situation? Is Joe dead? Does that mean he's locked up? Is he still locked up because of the whole money situation at that point in time? Because at that point in time, it's been like 20 years. So it's like, I mean, I don't know crime-wise, like, whether that guaranteed him being locked up for that long. So has he been in jail this entire time? Because um, the fact is... If her brother is still alive, does that mean their mom is still alive, too? Like, there's just so many questions. But to me, this is kind of painting the picture of, like, he's not the Nightingale. I think he's a piece of crap that killed his wife and his his uh, wife and his stepson. Uh, and, you know, obviously in a different timeline, killed his uh, stepdaughter. But I don't think he is the Nightingale. I just think he's a piece of crap human being. So it's like, I've, that's kind of where my mindset's always been. And it's to me, the circumstances that there are now kind of seems like that might be that case. I mean, because it's like maybe what's happening now with her brother getting shot, maybe that has nothing to do with anything. Maybe it's just like Raimi just happened to come upon a freak accident that just happened to happen or something. I don't know. Or maybe it was like a targeted thing. I don't know, too. Because I don't forget, I also. Throughout the past, I, you know, that he was the Nightingale, but it's like, I I don't know, because, like, you know, I was thinking that he was still alive, that the dad was, like, not lying, that basically the step Joe kind of molded him into being the um, Nightingale, but it seems like that might not be the case. Either. Like, I don't know, it's just, it's confusing. Like, to me, I just like the fact is that things are constantly changing. It's like, like, I legitimately was shocked by this episode just because it's like, holy crap, like, things didn't take the turns you thought they would. I was I was kind of with Jules, um, like thinking like, oh man, at any point Frank is going to get caught. I thought that's how things were going to work out legitimately. Like the whole uh, Raimi thing, I thought that was going to be a bigger part of the episode. But it's like, nope, like halfway through the episode, yep, that's done with. Oh yeah, she didn't kill him. Time got reversed. Like, I mean, time changed, so he's alive now. So I was like, holy crap, dude, that's crazy. 
Because I think this is the most we've ever seen kind of time kind of rapidly changing in an episode. It's never been that, like, quickly that things have changed like that. Um, kind of coincided with it. I brought it up earlier, but I didn't delve too much into it. it was the whole situation with Satch. Uh, he kind of, like, he's like, yo, I'm sorry I didn't have your back with the whole stand situation, but he's like, I'm trying to have your back now because, like, I know something's up. And then, you know, Satch, you know, Frank is like, yo, tell me what's up with you and Stan. Finally breaks down and tells him, as I figured it was much, I figured as much, Stan's blackmailing him. Essentially, back in the day when him and, when Satch and Stan were partners, they responded to a call. Basically, there was an abuse to boyfriend and, boyfriend slash husband. Him and, um, Satch went at it. Um, and basically, during the struggle, Satch basically, you know, it was a situation where Satch didn't have to kill him, but Satch ended up pushing him off the roof and killing him. Stan is like, yo, I got your back on this. It was self-defense. But ever since then, it's like, yo, he's had, like, it's, it, like, Satch knew there would be a price to pay, but he didn't know that it would be, you know, Stan. I mean, to be, um, Frank, that would be the one that kind of had to pay the price with the whole, like, Stan, like, trying to, like, have him killed and stuff like that, kind of playing the dirty cop angle and stuff like that. Once again, pointing out the fact that, like, man, man, oh, man, is it just that, that whole, oh, man, we got to do this by the book statement. Just, it makes it just that much more ironic he, that he said that. But, um, it, you know, for him, Satch, like, Frank is like, yo, like, he was a bad guy. It's like, it's not that, it's not that bad. Like, it, you know, it really was kind of self-defense. It's like, he's a bad guy. It's okay. And, like, for Satch, he's like, yeah, maybe it is, but, you know, it, he still thinks about it. He kind of wishes that he didn't do that. And, like, he sees, well, he doesn't know what it is, but he's like, he can see it in Frank that, like, something similar is happening. He's like, whatever the case may be, don't ever do it because it's like, you could, you think you could be able to handle it, but it's like, it will eat away at you forever. So, like, kind of another reason why he was able to kind of back now. So, I'm very interested to see how things play out, like, what these new developments mean. Um, especially when Raimi finds out that, Frank didn't kill Joe, and, like, maybe, just maybe him not killing Joe is actually the best outcome, because, like I said, I don't believe he is the Nightingale anyway, but still, it probably, it seems like it probably would have worked, it worked out in the long run, so, like I said, I don't know, the, her brother's still alive, so, like, maybe in some way, her mom's still alive, their mom is still alive, too, in this timeline, so... Some crazy, crazy developments, and I just cannot wait to see where everything goes from here, especially when that conversation comes about, like, oh, you didn't kill Joe? It's like, you should have killed Joe? It's like, no, I wasn't. I'm not going to. We're going to find a different way to kind of bust him. So, you know, it's just a crazy episode all around. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.